It was November 18, 2012, and it was just another cold Sunday night in Indiana. And what started off as just another pay-per-view in the WWE ended with a moment that would go on to change the future of wrestling. Sierra Hotel, India, Echo, Lima, Delta, Shield. Three men in all black popped up from the crowd during the main event, and before you knew it, Ryback was getting put through a table, everything was destroyed, and these three men came off looking like the biggest savages in the company, and the wrestling world was set into a frenzy. The Shield was born 10 years ago, and this was a group that was instantly beloved. You had three guys who looked like they didn't give a fuck, casually wearing tactical vests, black gloves, cargo pants, and they would go onto the ring, and they did whatever the hell they wanted. And what made it so cool was most of us had no idea who the hell these idiots were. This was before the NXT was aired on the WWE Network. This was before everyone and their mom knew who were the up and coming stars and developmental. Majority of fans back in the day just watched Raw, sometimes Smackdown, and that was it. So when you suddenly turned on the program and you saw these three taking over, it was a trip. And yet eventually the shield was just running shit in the WWE. By January they were beating up The Rock, by February they were beating John Cena on pay per view, and as soon as the shield made their debut everyone knew that this was something special everyone knew that this wasn't just going to be another young group that tweaks for a little bit and then comes and goes and is forgotten this was different these were three guys that the wwe actually believed in these were three guys that the wwe saw as their future this was the wwe's attempt to make up for the lost generation from 2006 until 2012 the wwe struggled to create a new generation of legit main eventers and even though in the long run some of them did work out from 06 until 2012 it literally looked like they forgot how to make legit main eventers. The future of the WWE post John Cena looks so bleak. But then the shield was in the cut and it was a scary sight. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose became the next generations. These were the faces of the future and they walked into WrestleMania 29 and they looked like they belonged. And as the months went by, they just became better and better. And every time they went into the ring, they were going to put on a banger match and the crowd was going to be invested. And the most important thing was during this time, so many kids who started watching wrestling in 2008 and 2009, they were getting older. So to them, they thought these guys were so cool. To a generation of wrestling fans, these were their guys, these were their anti-heroes and savages, these were their favorites. So to the younger demographic, they were all in on the shield. Like yo, for the guys born in 04, 05, 06, like these were their homies. And then for people my age, we were teenagers, we're entering high school, of course we loved this. And then for the older fans, yo, they loved it just as much. For them, they saw Seth Rollins as Tyler Black way back in ROH. They saw Dean as John Moxley and CZW just casually dying back in the day. Like, yo, they never would have thought that the people they saw wrestling on a 240p YouTube video back in 2006, some random idiots wrestling in a backyard, would make it this far in the WWE but they did. It was literally the perfect storm and by the end of 2013 after US titles and tag titles, amazing matches and everything, The Shield had lived up to all the hype and all the expectations. They had been a group on the main roster for 14 months and they did better than anyone would have ever imagined. And as 2014 was coming closer and closer, speculation of The Shield dying that came as well. After 14 months of dominating on the main roster, of course, just like every other group, just like every other team, the whole question came up, is it time for them to break up? Is it time for someone to turn heel? Is it time for the Shield to finally die? Because yo, they won championships, they did their thing, you know, maybe it's time for them to go their own separate way. So yeah, after 14 months, as 2014 was almost here, many started believing that it was finally time. But in 2014, they were actually about to reach even higher heights. 2014 came and this was a year that every single person watching WWE, no matter the age, no matter where they were from, no matter what, every single person eventually became a fan of The Shield. These guys were so elite, The Shield was so elite that they made every single fan into believers. Even though they spent a year beefing John Cena and CM Punk being the hitman for the authority, it reached a point in January of 2014 where everyone was like, alright, I guess I'm a fan. And in every single month of 2014, the Shield just got hotter and hotter. January had the Royal Rumble where the Shield all went in and they put in work and they were the highlights of the match. And once the fans realized that Daniel Bryan wasn't in the match, they cheered for Roman Reigns like he was prime Stone Cold Steve Austin in there. But that was just the beginning. February, The Shield versus The Wyatts, one of the best six man matches I've ever seen in my life. The Shield was up against another trio that was taking over and at Elimination Chamber, they tore the house down. The Shield went out there and put on a GOAT performance, their crowd was tweaking, the rest was doing 
doing some of the craziest things I've ever seen. So fast paced, so fire. And even though the Shield lost this match, they still look like a million bucks and got even more fans behind them. And then in March, the Shield, after being the company for 15 months, they finally turned face. The Shield reached the peak of being a heel where they were so cool, they were so badass as heels that the fans had no choice but to love them. And finally, in March, they turned on the authority when they disobeyed corporate Kane and rebelled and officially became faces. And in April, the Shield walks into WrestleMania 30 as faces. The crowd was in the palm of their hands, and in just in 2 minutes and 50 seconds, they win their match. They stand tall as they're surrounded by 75,000 wrestling fans going absolutely crazy for them. Then came May and the Shield after Mania got into their biggest feud, their most hyped feud and their best feud. Triple H, Randy Orton, Batista, Evolution was back and they were going to fight against the Shield at Extreme Rules. It was the past versus the future, three legends against three future legends and at Extreme Rules 2014, even though Blue Tista was in full effect, it, it didn't matter. The Shield put on a performance of a lifetime and in a certified class classic with the entire wrestling world behind them, they beat Evolution. 17 months into their run, the Shield was on top of the world. 17 months into their run, they were hotter than ever, they were better than ever, more merch was moving, every week there were more signs by fans in the crowd, every single week the fans were louder, and in a wrestling world where CM Punk had left the company and Daniel Bryan had to step away from surgery, the Shield became no doubt the hottest act in the WWE. The company finally did something, something they had been waiting for for almost a decade. They finally elevated some wrestlers to the point where they would be top stars. They finally made up for the lost generation and they had three certified main eventers. So then on June 1st, it was WWE Payback and it was the rematch with The Shield and Evolution. And of course, they put on another banger and The Shield swept Evolution by eliminating them all one by one. The Shield had destroyed Evolution, they were now the top dogs in the company, they were hotter than ever, they were more popular than ever, and after everything they had done, they were finally on top of the world. Every time they came out, the internet was buzzing at how awesome they were, every time they came out, their crowds were going crazy for them, and they reached the point where people were talking about how they never want the Shield to break up, how this was the perfect group, how this could be this generation's of the four horsemen, and it was so refreshing. In a time where everyone wanted every single group or every single tag team to break up, it wasn't like that for the Shield. They became so elite in 2014 that everyone just forgot about what they were talking about in December and January. Because now, by June of 2014, they were up there, right? They were the most popular faces in the company after John Cena. They had reached the top and they became more popular than anyone could have ever imagined in 2012. Everything was perfect. I mean, yo, in May of 2014, you had Seth Rollins in an interview talking about how there's a lot of life left in the Shield. And of course, it made sense. They had just turned face and everything was better than ever. Even Jim Ross was like, yeah, let's wait a year before we talk about breaking them up. There was no doubt that the Shield was at their absolute peak and after sweeping evolution in that match at payback, every single fan was anticipating to see what was going to be the Shield's next chapter. It was June 2nd, 2014, and it was a warm summer night in Indiana. Live from the Gainbridge Fieldhouse, the very same arena the Shield made their debut in 18 months ago, it was Monday Night Raw. Leading up to the show, there was not much news on what was actually going to go down. The preview on WWE.com was basic as usual. On other sites, it was reported that this would be Batista's last night in the company on his current run. Other articles with potential spoilers and previews were like, yeah, The Shield is likely in the market for a new prey as well. Let's see what they do. Let's see what happens. It was supposed to be just another episode of Raw. Raw begins and the first thing that happens is Batista waves goodbye to the WWE and makes his exit, leaving Triple H and Randy Orton all alone and they don't want to end their beef with the Shield just yet and Triple H says he will not stop until the Shield is dead. But the show goes on like every other Raw from 2014, we got some Stephanie promos in there, we had Bad News Barrett, it was the usual. And as the night went on, we didn't see the Shield or anything, but we did find out that the main event of the show was going to be Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns. So the show continues. And and then it was finally time. With only 11 minutes left in the show, it was 10.49 p.m. Eastern, The Shield finally came out from the crowd. The fans were going nuts, Roman Reigns gets his introduction for the match, it was Monday Night Raw, it was live from Indiana, it was the main event, it was going to be Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns. The Shield gets into the ring and everyone is chilling, everyone is calm, Dean Ambrose gets the mic and cuts a promo, even Rollins says some words, and then Roman Reigns drops this line. The men standing in this ring are brothers. 
At this point, there were 6 minutes left in this show and we knew that we weren't gonna get a match. Maybe we'll get a brawl or something, maybe some young talent might join Randy and Triple H, who knows, right? Whatever. It's just another Raw episode, right? So Triple H comes out with Randy Orton and his good old fashioned sledgehammer. Seth sees that and instantly goes out of the ring, gets some chairs, and he's ready for beef. And of course, The Shield is ready for beef. So Triple H and Randy are outside the ring, The Shield is inside the ring, they're standing side by side, just like how they have been for the past 18 months. And then Triple H gets the mic and says, Last night was plan A, tonight is plan B, there's always a plan B. And ladies and gentlemen, it was as if time stood still. And all you hear is, Oh my god! As the fans scream for his life, Seth Rollins hit Roman Reigns in the back with a chair, Dean Ambrose looks like he had just seen a ghost, and Rollins looking like a stone cold killer goes absolutely mental on his former brothers. He proceeds to beat the shit out of Dean and Roman so hard that the chair bent and it was one of the most shocking, one of the most out of left field things in WWE history. Nobody saw this coming, nobody was hoping for it, nobody wanted this. For once there was a team that the fans didn't want to see implode, the shield was at their peak. The night before, they had just beat three legends, they were at their best, they were at this hottest, and just when you thought things were only gonna get better, Seth Rollins turned on them. Seth Rollins, the last person anyone expected, and that's what made this moment even crazier. Everyone thought when the shoot was finally gonna end, when someone was finally gonna turn, it was probably gonna be Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose. When the time was right, it was gonna be one of them. Dean was the crazy one, Roman Reigns was the chosen one, right? It has to be one of them, but nah. The crowd was silent, they were in shock, they were shook, there was no cheers, there were no boos, they just couldn't comprehend what the hell just happened. Meanwhile, Rollins was in the ring just going off until the chair was broken. After 18 months alongside these men, he aligned himself with Triple H and Randy Orton and on god this was a top 5 most shocking ending in Raw history. Like yo this was just a special moment, this was one of those things that you never saw coming and the second you did, the second you realized what was about to happen, it was too late and your heart dropped. The moment when everyone walks up, Roman and Dean and Seth stands there in the back, it's like oh no. Legit one of the most brilliant things that WWE had ever done. When nobody expected it, when everybody thought this shoot was just getting started and they were going to keep getting better and better, they ended it. And it is so hard to describe how shook the wrestling world truly was. I'll never forget seeing Twitter blow up, even Facebook was popping back then. Even the next day at school was crazy. I remember people coming to me who casually watch wrestling, you know, they were hardcore fans back in the day, but they kind of stopped now. Even they were coming up to me like, yo, what happened last night? Why did he do it? Who? What? Where? What? Everyone was tripping. Dear Diary, wrestling was sad tonight. Seth Rollins just broke my heart. Honestly, I was expecting anyone but Rollins to turn on the shield. I am legitimately dismayed. It's like someone has died. Rest in peace, the shield. This, I want to go back to payback season where everything was predictable and made sense and my heart wasn't broken. You, Seth. Holy hell did that really just happen. That was an amazing turn of events. Props to the WWE for pulling something bold like that. Yo, imagine being like 8 or 10 years old and you were watching Raw and these were your favorite wrestlers. Like you grew up and even though guys like Cena and stuff drew you into the company, these three became your guys, right? These became your favorites, this was your group and these were the guys that made you fall in love with wrestling. And on a random Monday night without any signs, without any warning, just when you thought everything was perfect, this happened. Even for me, at 15 years old, this hurt me, this had me feeling some type of way. You saw the group grow, you saw them develop into these elite personalities, they slowly made the entire wrestling world believe in them, believe in the SHIELD, and after 18 months, 18 months of them doing their thing, it was the end on a night that was supposed to be just another Raw. It was supposed to be the night where the SHIELD went into their next chapter, but it ended up being the night the SHIELD died. What a moment and what a time to be alive. And the craziest part about this night was, the Shield themselves, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Seth Rollins, they didn't know it was ending until they walked into that arena that very night. What a moment man, what a moment. In the comments down below, let me know your memories of that very night and also since it is the 10th anniversary of The Shield debuting, let me know your favorite memories of The Shield down below as well. If you were one of those kids who this was your childhood, that you were one of the kids I was talking about and these were some of your fondest memories, 
please let me know below. It's your boy Pav, aka Wrestling Gifts. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had to make some content for the YGs out there, but honestly, even for me, I loved it because this was also a special time for when I was a wrestling fan, when I was entering high school and I was still like the only kid that watched it. Fun times, yo, fun times. But alright guys, I'll see you guys soon with the next video dropping soon. It's your boy Pav, and I'm out of here. Take it easy, and yes, stay tuned for more content coming soon. Later guys.